you probably don't realize this, but your lousy grip is absolutely killing your driving distance right now. Stay tuned, I'm gonna explain how. Hi, I'm Steve with HitItLonger.com and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how you can make errors in your grip that really hurt your driving distance and club head speed. Um, I've got four tips for you in this video. Um, maybe you're making one or more of them and this video will really help you get the ball down the fairway further. Okay, the first one, very, very common, is for a golfer to grip with the left hand right on top of the grip at 12 o'clock. Now, it seems like a natural position because a lot of beginners tend to do this, but uh, you probably have, oh, I don't know, 30 or 40 yards of slice built into this grip that you can get rid of simply by turning the entire hand, like you're shaking hands with your thumb out like this, and that would be my 12 o'clock grip with the thumb right on top and I'm just turning my see I'm turning my entire arm over an hour put it back on the grip again and there you see my thumb is now located at one now what you don't want to fall into is this this trap where you don't move the hand instead you just separate the thumb hey look my, my thumbs at one I'm not gonna slice anymore and Slicing with an open face tends to lead to too much backspin, too high of a launch angle, too steep of a, a steep of a descent. The ball rolls sideways. I bet there's some of you out there that have experienced that drive where it's slicing so bad it either doesn't roll at all or it just rolls sideways instead of forward. That, that is really depressing. So taking the whole hand again, rolling it to one o'clock position like this. Okay, uh, the second idea where a lot of people tend to go wrong and it affects their distance off the tee is where they're gripping the club in their hands. A big error that is common is you're gripping it, you're laying it across diagonally in the left hand across the palm like this. So it ends up with, it it's actually goes in combination with number one and it makes you end up with your thumb uh, too much on top. I suppose you could do it this way too, but it's, yeah, I guess you could. Um, but right now I've got the grip uh, laying across my palm more diagonally like this. And that simply will not enable you, it will not enable you to free up the hinge, uh, act like a joint or a hinge joint as quickly as you could as if if the grip was more at the base of your fingers like this. Do you see I'm running it at the bottom pad in the last three fingers right there. And then I'm scrunching my index finger and I'm running it in the second pad. So now I've got it in the fingers. I'll be able to release the club with a lot more supple quickness than if it was running through the palm. So if those two weren't enough to crush a golfer's distance, a lot of people have both of those first two, and a lot of people will combine them with this third one, which is you're just simply squeezing it too tight. So right now I'm squeezing. You can see I've got the blood not circulating into that part of my hand. It's turning white, so I'm white knuckling it. You, if you're a strong guy, you'll tend to see the muscles popping out in the forearms and the arms and we need to have this thing gripping so light do you see you know, that it'll pendulum like this without any effort at all it's almost like you're just trying to hold it almost by two fingers you see how loose that pendulum plays if i'm not getting in the way so people squeeze so hard at this thing i can't even move the club head for them it's crazy how they they're locked up um, one trap people will fall into as well as a corollary to this is they might be good uh, as they take the club back. A lot of people will squeeze and lock it up right before impact, especially a lot of slicers. So if you're a slicer, that's definitely one thing you want to check 
is do I squeeze and lock up the forearm and club like that? See how I'm stifling the progress of the club head and it's staying open because of that rather than letting it continue on flicking past the hand freely without impedance from your tension. Okay, one last thing that's very common in the grip where people are kind of doomed to be short hitters right from the beginning, and that's really sad. You've doomed yourself into being a short hitter before you've even pulled back the club. Yeah, that, that's depressing to have to find that out. Um, <laughs> I have to be the bearer of bad news sometimes. It's the grip size though, and I don't know why so many club fitters do this, but they think that just because you're older that you're going to have arthritis or something in your hands, which is silly. But they're going to put on a jumbo grip for you that you can't even reach around. And then to combine that, I have so many bad golfers try to do an interlocking grip, which really takes kind of big hands and long fingers to pull off. Um, I got people that, that I, I try to send them through the release and their fingers don't even go halfway around the darn thing. I mean, they're pinky. And so they can't even hold on to it. It's like falling right out of their hand like, like this. It's like, hey, I could just knock it and I'll put it right out of your hand. And so what they'll have to do when the club is not secure is they'll have to squeeze harder. They'll have to go back to number three and start squeezing harder. So I want to show you where this comes on my hand. Now, this is just a mid-sized grip with no extra wraps. I've got very big hands and long fingers and I don't even use a jumbo. But I want to show you what's important that you get at least the third and fourth fingers to wrap around and touch the palm without any problem. You can see my pinky, there's a small gap and about the same gap in my index, but they're pretty close to touching as well. You can see. So for sure those two fingers need to kind of be able to dig into your palm because you're reaching all the way around with the fingers. If you're not doing this, the grip is too big. Don't be scared with if you have a jumbo grip, go back to a regular size grip. And if that's not even enough, I've had lots of people that I have encouraged to go back and get their grips redone and go into an undersized grip. I don't know if it's 1 32nd inch or 1 16th of an inch, um, but go to an undersized grip in order to get your hands to be able to wrap around. That way your fingers can stay on it securely and then you don't have to squeeze and then you don't have to get in the way of this beautiful pendulum action that we're trying to make to get our club head speed. So there's four different ideas for you to check. Um, if you are a, an average golfer, or you're a shorter hitter, you're a slicer, um, those are four things you definitely want to go go and check off um, before anything else because you really should look at the grip before anything else. Um, grip errors will have to be compensated by an error somewhere else through the process and then you'll have two errors you have to get rid of instead of just one. So okay so now that now that I've uh, talked about all four let's see if I can put them to use. Okay starting with I do have a proper size grip for my hand I am dropping, dropping my tension down in my grip pressure. See how I just let it kind of fall, hold it, release the contraction, let it fall until it hits the ground and that's soft enough. My thumb is at one o'clock and as you can see, I do have the club laying across the fingers. So let's see if it works. I will take that any day of the week. <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, I hope it helps. Uh, let me know if any of these four tips worked for you by putting a comment down below. Um, special thanks to Golf Development Complex for this beautiful scenery today. And um, I hope you'll check out some of the other videos on the channel. There's a lot of stuff there on hitting your drives longer and straighter. And I encourage you to look through them and see if any of them are for you. So, uh, hey, as usual, thanks a lot 
for um, watching the video and I'll see you next time.